When I hear Western governments talking about Lebanese democracy, I always have to point out to them that actually, if there was democracy in Lebanon, it would be President Syed Hassan Nasrallah who would be governing the country. Well, it would be. Well, think about it. It would be the majority, the great majority of the people of Lebanon would vote for Syed Hassan. He would be the president, but he can't be the president. No Muslim can be the president because of a constitution drawn up specifically to avoid it and based on a census older than the oldest man still alive in Lebanon. They say that Hezbollah went to Qusayr to join the battle in Syria for sectarian reasons. If Hezbollah were interested in sectarianism, they could take over Lebanon in an afternoon. In an afternoon. But they have no interest in taking over Lebanon. It's precisely because they're against sectarianism that they entered the battle in Qusayr. Hezbollah were the last foreign force to arrive in Syria, not the first. And if the other foreign forces will leave Syria, Hezbollah would be delighted to leave Syria also. It's because they're not sectarian, because they don't want to see the triumph of sectarianism in Syria, that the Hezbollah fighters finally had to enter that battle. The Syrian people are not Saudis. They're not Afghans. They will never, ever, ever accept to be ruled by Al-Qaeda and their barbaric, obscurantist interpretations of Islam. Never. Who brought these Takfiri fanatics to Syria from Chechnya, from Libya, from the Netherlands, from England, from all over the world. These people have descended upon the people of Syria like vultures. They have descended. Who brought them? Who's paying for them? Every one of us here in this room knows that. They are determined to destroy Bashar al-Assad. Not for any bad things that the regime in Damascus have done, and they have done bad things. They are de determined to destroy Bashar because of the good things. Because Bashar will not bow the knee and surrender Syrian territory to Israel. That's why they hate him so. He told the Palestinian resistance, yes, you can live here in Damascus. We will feed you. We will arm you. We will finance you. We will protect you. And look how they have been betrayed by some elements of the Palestinian resistance in return. He told, he told the Palestinian refugees in Yarmouk and the other camps, we might be poor here in Syria, but you will not be poorer than us. We have schools, we have hospitals, we have universities, we have sports and culture facilities, and you have exactly the same right to enjoy them as any Syrian has the right to enjoy them. You know any other Arab countries where the Palestinian refugees live exactly the same as the citizens of that country? No, you don't, because there are none. They hate Bashar because he refuses to break relations 
with the Lebanese National Islamic Resistance Hezbollah, which defeated Israel on the battlefield. The only, the only, only Arab army ever to defeat Israel on the battlefield. He refuses to break with them. He refuses to play the imperial game of further isolating and weakening Iran. Why should Iran be treated in this way? Asks Bashar. They don't have any nuclear weapons, but Israel has hundreds of nuclear weapons. Why don't you sanction Israel for the nuclear weapons it's got rather than sanction Iran for nuclear weapons it doesn't have? When did Iran last invade anybody else's country? Iran hasn't invaded any other country for more than 400 years. I wish I could say that about my country. Don't you? Iran has done nothing to deserve the international ostracism, isolation, sanction, and threat which it faces. So why should Bashar go along with it? He's telling the truth, the others are lying. They say that Iran is intent on the sectarianization of the Arabs. How can that be? As the chair in her gracious introduction pointed out, I myself broke the siege on Gaza over and over again over these last few years. Iran has been supporting the Palestinian people in Gaza with everything that they need. And there's not a single Shia in Gaza, not a single one. The battle, however, has turned. The tide has turned in Syria. The government in Damascus is not going to fall. But we will have. Be sure, be sure about that. That however many handheld shoulder missiles However many knives to cut people's chests open to eat their hearts, the tide has turned. Syria has won the war. Syria will never capitulate and will never surrender. And if I'm right, then we may have stopped Sykes-Picot too in its tracks. Do you think that America wants Bashar out so that a government more just to the Arab cause can take its place? You'd have to be a lunatic to believe that. Just as the Nazi hordes thought that they could choke the life out of the then Soviet Union by winning the battle of Stalingrad. So this battle to defend Syria will prove a turning point for the Arabs. I believe that it can be so. I believe in the Arabs more than the Arabs believe in themselves. And they have to find a way to break out of this malaise of waiting for the foreigner to tell them what to do, to organize what's going to happen in their countries. And I believe that they can do it.